Welcome to the day two of seven day Figma design course. And today we are covering styles and library. And by the end of this video, you will be able to set up your color palette, your typography system, your grid system, your effects, and your icon library, which you can use in your designs. Okay. And uh, there are some pre requirements because I'm not going to cover the theory part in this. I have already created detailed video for beginners. Like in my free UIUX design course, you can go watch that the video is available in both Hindi and English go watch according to your preferences. Like these are the four must watch videos to understand this concept. Okay. Because we will be using that thing. I'm covering only the tool part. We have the theory behind that, like we have a logic behind that, like how to select a color, how to select a font or what grid, what is grid system, how to use a grid system. We have all those things covered in the theory part. Okay. So go watch all this video. You can either watch these videos first and then come back to Figma and watch this video or you can watch this video after this video. Okay. Because the video is pretty simple. It's not that much complex. Okay. Now starting with the very basic question, what are styles? And yeah, this video is divided into two parts. First one is the styles. Second one is the library. First we will generate the color styles. Then I will show you what is library and uh, how can you properly use color styles with the help of library. Okay. Okay. Coming back to styles. So, so what is styles? So style is simply the collection of like our color palette, our font system or the typography system or effects or grids. Okay. Like if you just look at the layout of Figma here, we have an option called local styles. If you just click on the plus button, then we have different options. Okay, like text, uh, colors, effects, and grids. Let me show you that thing via practical example. Like here we have a design. Oh, wait a minute. Here we have a design and this is not my design. I found this design on Figma community. You can go and copy this design. I will leave the link in the description and make sure that you appreciate the original creator by liking his file. This is not my design. Okay, so let's coming back to design. Now imagine you designed your whole application in purple theme. Like you can see that they are using a purple color for the button for the clickable text and for all the stuff like in the illustration and you decided that you will not use co purple color from now we will use a red color or a blue color so what you have to do now is you have to go and change every single color like you have to select every single component and change the color like select this and you have to change every single color which will take hours and this is even worse in development because you can change easily in designing, but in development, it's not possible to change the color by going to every single components code because there must be hundred screens where you use the same button. So you developer has to go to hundred different pages of the code and he has to change the color code there. So it's practically not possible. And the second reason why we use style is to be consistent. Like the color we used on the first screen should be same as the color we used on the 10th screen or the 100th screen or if two designers are working on the same project, then their design should look the same. Okay. So to avoid any error or to work faster, we use color styles. Okay. Let me show you how to generate a color styles first. Like if you just select any color. Okay. And before that, let me show you how, what can you do if you have already generated the styles. Okay. Like. In this, I have not generated any styles, but in this I have generated the styles and I'm already using a style. If I just click on any button, you can see that the fill color is purple, purple 600. Okay. Okay. Let me deselect it. And if I were to change the color, I can simply go here. Let me zoom out so you can see that clearly. If I change this purple color, simply go here and change it. You can see that the color is updated in all the designs and it saved me hours. And e this thing is even easy in development. We do the same thing in development. I will also show you how you can share your color palette with your developer. Like I will show you a plugin which can generate a code like it can convert your whole color palette, your typography system, your effects into a code. So developer don't have to pick color every single time. Okay. It will be very easy and consistent for him. Okay. Let me show you how to generate a color style. Simply click any element like if I draw rectangle and pick the color. Okay. So I want to add this color to my styles. Let me change the color so that it's distinguishable. Okay. We have a green color. So what I have to do is I have to select this thing, go to this four dot icons like styles and variable, click on it and then click on plus button. Okay. And then type the color name. Okay. Like if, let me type green and there is actually a way by which we name colors. I will tell you that thing in just a minute. Okay. And you can type the description here if you want. Okay. So simply create style. Let me close it. Now you can see that that color style is available in our local style. We have a green color here and I can use that thing in any element. If I select it, 
and simply click on the fill icon here okay and simply select it okay i can do that thing for the stroke also let me undo it if i were to click on the four dots here the stroke then select this then i will be able to add a green stroke to, to the outline here okay now let me show you how can you generate all these color palettes but before that let's see how we name and select the colors okay now in any application or website these are the few colors that we have first of all we have the primary color or brand color like uh, we mainly pick primary colors from our logo like if this is a fanta logo like this is a company logo then we will pick the orange color okay or we will we can pick this brown or blue color whatever this color is and we will generate different color palettes from that or the different versions like we have this was the original color and this is the lighter version and lighter version and this is a darker version so we will use these colors as our, as our primary colors and we assign a name to every single color so that it's easy you don't have to tell the hex code to every single time like if you are discussing your design with someone and you're telling we are using primary 700 for our clickable links or our primary buttons we are using primary 700 as a background so that will be very easy to co communicate and to manage also okay and when it comes to the naming like how we name colors so, so we name our colors based upon two things first one is the usage and second one is the color name of itself okay like you can type orange 100 here that will also work fine but in our case this is a primary color we so we typed primary 100 or you can also type brand 100 okay or ascent 100 these all are same we name our colors based upon the usage or its original name okay and we add a number in the ending of that thing and the number should be in a pattern like you can see that we have primary 100 200 300 400 500 we give the smallest number to the lightest color and the biggest number to the darkest color here like you can see that primary here similarly we have indicators now we have four, three indicators red yellow green we use red to show any danger like if you are designing a screen like delete this file so in that case we will use a red color button so we are using red color palette in that case okay so then we have the warning color or the yellow color we should use this thing to show a warning like add two more characters to your password to make it strong it's not something dangerous but it will be better if you added two characters so we are using a yellow color there okay okay and we similarly name this thing in the same way like you can type either yellow 100 or warning 100 it totally depends upon you but it should be consistent throughout the design like you cannot name like yellow 100 then warning 200 it's not the good way to do this thing similarly we will generate color palette for the green one and then we have the neutrals or darks or gray we mainly use this thing for text uh, if you are in light theme like if i show you on youtube they are using black color for the text and they are using only two colors for the text you can see that like this is the primary text and th this is the secondary text they are using a little lighter version of the dark color like if i scroll down you can see that here we have another color like this is the primary text so they are using a darker version of black and this is a secondary text so they are using a little lighter version of that text and i will show you just in just a minute how to select these two colors okay then we name this thing in the same way like you cannot name randomly and the pattern is actually not fixed you can name them like gray zero gray one gray two gray three or gray zero gray five like the jump should be consistent it should be easy to understand and maintain okay and we also have extra colors which is black and white but personally i don't add extra colors like white and black because i have already added those colors in my gray color palette like the darkest color will work as a black color or for as a background if you are designing dark theme or or as a text color if you are designing light theme okay and for the white color i add an extra color like gray zero i added this extra color this was originally not present in the color palette okay like you can see the hex code of this thing like this f f f f it's on the way top it's pure white so it's always a good idea because because that way it will be easy to maintain all the things okay now let me show you how can you generate all this color palette and if you want to understand the theory part of this thing go watch the video about color theory because this is just a tool and you are useless without theory because tool is a very small part of designing okay the main thing is the theory so go watch the free ux design course link is in the description and in the i button okay now let me show you how can you generate color styles very quickly okay for that we will use a plugin simply go to resources panel or you can press shift i then go to this plugins option okay like we have three options here go to the plugins option then search for a plugin tailwind and link is in the description for this plugin you can open that thing from here like this plugin like tailwind css color generator simply click on it to run that plugin and then you will see something like this now what you have to do is you have to pick your primary color okay like if i draw a rectangle and pick this color you have to copy the hex code 
no matter what color you are using you might be using a red color orange color blue color in this case we are using a purple color so we will simply click on it okay and th then copy by pressing ctrl c or command c then paste the hex code here simply select the whole color paste it then it will generate the color palette here okay now what you have to do is you have to first you have to click on this option like generate a color guide and also name the color i'm using a primary and you should na not name your colors based upon their color like you should not type purple here for your primary color always type primary it's a good option because in future if you decided that i will not use purple color i will use blue color so that will be a mess and you cannot change the color name once they are generated because the developer is also using the same color name so it will be a very big mess if you change the color name your app or website will not work in the coding part because in development it's not easy to change the color name so even if you are changing the color you should never change the color name so pick a color name which is suitable for every color like if i type primary here i can use any color here red green orange blue that won't be a problem okay but if you were to type purple then that will cause problems in future okay so always type primary so select this option generate a color guide and simply click on color create styles we have another option here create variables and we will cover variables in like the fifth video and that's very interesting video that will blow your mind uh, so simply click on create styles so it will generate a color palette styles okay so that it's easy to visualize and you can see the numbers here like primary 50 primary 100 and here we have the hex code okay and if you don't know about all these things go watch the video about color theory in ui design because theory is very important you are useless without theory okay now if you were to press escape you can see that it has added colored palettes in the color styles and if your color palettes are not inside a folder like you can see that they are inside a folder for better organization what you can do is select the first color hold down shift select the last color and then right click and then click on this option add to new folder okay <coughs> and then simply type the name okay let me undo it and for some reason if your color palettes are not organized in order like if you're placed your colors are placed randomly you have to arrange them you have to arrange them manually like take this 900 simply click and drag 600 click and drag take it to the top yeah it's good now okay so you have to arrange all your color palettes okay and when it comes to the darker colors like we have generated our primary colors we pick our primary color from the logo now when it comes to the darker color what i do is you can use any other method if you have a specific color in your mind for the gray one simply select this one and copy the hex code let's break the style and you can break the style from simply click on this break icon like we have just detached style simply click on it and you can also remove a style from anyone that will remove the color completely but we don't want that let me undo it simply click on it simply select the hex code and copy it and paste the hex code here okay now when you will paste this color nothing will happen because the color is still the same it's generating color from the darkest color okay now for the gray colors or the darkest color or neutral colors we will decrease the saturation like here we have the hue here we have the saturation and here we have the brightness or lightness okay you can either type the hue saturation manually like if i just were to type 10 here that will work fine you can change this number according to your requirement what suits you what you think will look good in your design there is no fixed number you can you can also use these colors use these colors so you can go completely black that will also work fine that's up to you okay and yeah if you just take this thing to the way corner then it will decrease the hue to zero and then if you were to increase then it will not work in the right way so be careful with that let me paste the hex code again okay I will decrease it to somewhere around 10. Yeah, 10 is a good number and I will also decrease that darkness. Sorry, lightness. Okay, then simply select these two options and make sure to type the name correctly like dark or you can type neutral here. Okay, and one more thing when you are naming something in Figma, like if you type slash and then if I tar type uh, neutral. Okay, then what it will do is it will add that thing inside a folder like first of all it will create a folder of dark then it will create another folder of neutrals okay so if i just click, select these two options like generate a color style and simply click on create styles okay, let me move this color palette here and press escape you can see that i have a primary color here and if i do go inside dark i have another folder 
so this is how the naming works if you uh, type slash even in the screen like if i just select it and type control r or sorry press control r okay and then type slash like this is the screen one okay so now if i export this screen like you can see that i have added a slash here in the name so now if I exported this screen, then it will export that thing inside a folder. So this is a very important thing about slash. So you should use slash very smartly. If you want to separate two things, you can always use an underscore or a dash, but you should never use a slash because slash might mess up your design unintentionally. Okay. Now coming back to our color palette. Now we have generated the main colors of our design. Now the other three colors like the red green you are independent to choose any color. Generally what I do is for those colors, I will draw a rectangle like copy it three times okay okay then select this and type red here and uh, green and yellow okay then copy the hex code then paste the hex code here okay then i'll generate the color palette from this obviously you can adjust the lightness and darkness like for yellow color i generally decrease the darkness so did the lightness hello i decrease the lightness of that color okay yeah this should work fine and it and it's up to you where you want to place in the lightness scale okay simply change the name yellow okay and create styles okay and do the same thing with the red one simply select it and choose the hex code paste it here and add, adjust the color if you want then simply click on create then do the same thing with the green and it should work fine okay and uh, if you already created your designs without styles and after that you discovered this video or you discovered about styles what you can do is uh, select all your designs then scroll down a bit then you see this option here selection color simply click on show selection color if it's not expanded then you will see all of your colors expanded okay simply click on it then you have to choose the color like if i go into the purple color let's say this was my primary color in the initially if i click on this then choose the color from here okay like if i select this then it will update that thing to the color styles now all the places where i use purple color it has been attached to, to the styles okay like if i select this now i'm using primary 600 you can do the same thing for all the colors okay? and that will work fine like now coming to how can you select the text color and although this is not a theory video but i'm telling you real quick like we have a primary text here like this is the heading and this is a secondary text now the color whoever created this design used is wrong actually because it's not passing the color contrast again color contrast is in the theory part go watch the video you will understand it but for checking color contrast we use a plugin called contrast C O N T R A S T. okay simply go to resource panel search it and click it the color contrast should be bigger than 4.5 is to 1 you can see that we have a color contrast here of 1.69 is to 1 it should be bigger than 4.5 is to 1 so what we will do is we will go to fill and choose the gray color like uh, we will start picking the colors from the lighter version like let me pick this and if it's passing we will use that thing for the secondary text like for the this is the primary text this is the secondary text like the paragraph text okay so we will increase the darkness it's still not passing we'll use dark for 500 yeah it's passing so you can use the dark 500 for the body text or the secondary text and for the primary text you should always use the darkest color like go to fill and choose the darkest color in your dark color palette or the neutral grays okay and this should work fine and you should not use any third color for that text yeah if it's a clickable text like in this color you can always choose this like go to primary and choose the color which passes the color contrast okay like if i choose 500 this is also passing so i can use that but i will recommend you to use a little darker version okay because i were to add a background color to this like say if i choose this then this color might fail so in that case you have to use a little darker version okay like primary 700 okay although this is passing but in some colors it will not pass and uh, if you just look at the layout of youtube they are doing the same thing they are only using two colors like here we have the primary text and every here we have the secondary text and the color of this text is actually different let me show you like we can use a, pl a plugin called what font simply install it on the google chrome you can find that thing very easily and i will leave the link for that in description and if you click on any text it will show you the color code like this is rgb 15 15 15 and if i select any other dark color it is also rgb 15 15 15 but if i select our to select secondary color like the secondary text like here we have the secondary text here simply click on it this is 
RGB 96, 96, 96. Okay, and if I select any other secondary text, like here we have, this is also RGB 96, 96. Here, this is also RGB 96, 96. So they are using only two colors for text also. And if the text is clickable, they are using a blue color. Okay, in your case, it will be your primary color. So you don't have to use multiple colors for that text. It's not recommended. Okay, two colors will work fine. And uh, for the disabled state, yeah, like the download button is disabled. So and there are two ways to create disabled state, either change the color or change the opacity. I will recommend you to change the opacity because it will be easy for the developer to understand or for you to also manage because there are many problems associated with creating a disabled state with a different color. Okay. So you should always decrease the opacity like 30% will work fine like 20, 30, 40%. You can experiment with that thing. That's up to you. Now coming to the text style. Now we will do the same thing for text. Like we don't pick uh, text uh, text size randomly. Like if I select this, you can see that the font size is 24 and we have other property like this is the font. Okay. And this is the body text. If I select this, we have the font size and then we have the font weight. Okay. And before that, let me show you different properties of text inside Figma. Like if I draw a frame and if I type any text by pressing T, you can see the text tool is selected. Simply click and type anything okay and then press escape like if you press escape then you will be outside of the box because if if you keep typing if you press anything it will type that thing but if you press escape now it will not type that thing okay if i press v and then select the text tool i can move it and we have few options here like this is the styles option you already know that thing if you just click here you will be able to create a new styles and add it we will generate color styles in just a minute okay now let's look at the features of text in the figma uh, let's copy our big text here okay like this is a paragraph text you can see that the actual height of this container is actually bigger than the actual text so if what if i want to use only this much height like i want the text to fit in that height so what i can do is let me undo it for some reason if you have expanded your text box simply click on this option okay like auto width then it will fit the text container according to its child content like how much type text you have typed it will change that thing according to that let me copy it like so that i can show you different examples okay like if i decrease or change the width randomly okay in this case the width is also high okay we have first option we use the auto width okay like this okay then we will select the second option like auto height in that what it will do is like you can see that in the first option it merge all things in one line but we don't want that we want two lines so we will choose the auto height option that way it will take the text to the next line you can like you can change the width but the height will remain the same like the height will adjust automatically but in this option the width was actually fixed like you can see that we have a auto width option auto height option and the third option is a fixed size like in that case like if i resize it now that box size will remain the same no matter how much text i add inside this okay like you can see that how much text i added the box size will remain the same you can see that the box size is still the same although the text is visible but the box size is same okay so this is the use of these two options you, because in ui design you will use fixed size rarely it's not recommended to use fixed size okay now let's look at other properties like if i increase the height now how how figma is deciding that this text should be placed on the top not on the bottom like it should it can stick to the bottom if i resize it for that we have an option here like you can see there if i press the bottom like align bottom then it will fix that text to the bottom you can see that when i change the width or the height sorry it it stick the text to the bottom you can also align that thing to the center if i change the height it will stick the text to the center let's look at other option let's fix the width first and align it to top okay now if i increase the width now how figma is deciding that this text should be on the left okay this can be on the right for that we have another option this is called alignment if i press this align center let me choose a small text this is very big text it's not visible let's increase the font size type let's type uh, 32 here yeah you can see that i have selected that center align option so it has aligned my text to the center let's resize it a bit and if I choose left align, it will align the text to the left, right and left. Okay. In UI design, we use a left align if you are not designing for a language like Urdu, where we write from right to left. In that case, you have to use right to left. But 
if you are designing any app in english or any language in which we write from left to right in that case you have to choose the left align option okay okay next we have with the graph height like you can see that there is some spacing between first line and the second line now how figma is deciding it's deciding according to this like this option here and in ui design the line height should be like around 130 percent to 150 percent of the font size like if i'm using 12 pixel font size then the line height should be around 130 percent of 12 like if you if i multiply 12 into 1.3 because we want 130 percent of 12 if you are, if the font size was 16 then i will type 16 here then the line height will be 20.8 around and this is a theory part you have to watch the video about typography to understand the theory part okay like how all these things work but if i tell you in short we use 130 percent minimum or 125 percent minimum for the line height like if i change it like if i type 24 here then it will increase the spacing between two lines like if i draw a rectangle then you can see that the baseline like you see this blue line here like below this text it's called the baseline and the baseline of another text like the another line the distance between the baseline of two lines is 24 pixels okay you can see that again this is the baseline if you hover over the text you will see the baseline here we have the baseline of this text and that the spacing between these two is 24 pixels so you can see that the height of this rectangle is 24 pixels okay if i select it you can see the height is 24 pixels okay <clears throat> and next thing we have is the font weight font weight is the thickness you can see that regular medium ball it's the thickness of the weight and we have the font and font is like a different handwritings we have okay and this is all in theory part again theory is very important i'm telling you again and again because it's very important you are useless if you only know tool no one is going to hire you if you only know that tool okay okay other options we have if you just go inside this option before that let's see the paragraph spacing now what is paragraph spacing like now to understand it let me type some text okay let's see we have this text here and if i decrease the width then you can see that we have actually two lines like i pressed enter while typing this thing i want this this text like the hello my name is kirtanya and i am a ui ux designer i want these lines to be separated so if i increase the line height like if i type 24 here you can see that it increased the line height of all the lines like it's separating all the lines equally but we don't want that we want these two lines to look separate like my name and the title so what we will do is we will increase the paragraph spacing I like we'll use the arrow key now you can see that it has increased the line height between two lines like if you press enter here like if you click here enter then it will increase the line height between these two lines like when you press enter or you go to new line like we have in real world like you write in one single line then you jump to another line in your notebook so this is what happening here it increasing the spacing between two lines when you hit enter but the spacing of single line like this is a single line these are not two lines it's just that it don't have that much width to fit the text like if i increase the width you can see that it's actually one line and we have three lines here like hello my name is then we have three lines where decrease the width okay so this is what it's doing and we have other options here like if you go inside and then we have basics here and detailed you can explore the detailed option because you will rarely use these things in ui design okay like if i go to basics like in the alignment you can see that we have an extra option like justified content if i click on justified content then what it will do is if i resize it it will justify the content you must have seen this thing in google docs that how things work there okay you can explore around these options then we have some styling option or the decoration if you just click on underline then it will add an underline to the text or the strike through okay and then we have the case now case is like how you type like this is a small case or if i choose caps like upper case then it will type all the text in the capital letters okay if i choose small case then it will convert all the text to the small and then we have option called vertical trim like we have two options here like if i choose cap height to baseline now what it's doing is let me type another text okay text okay you can see that the box height is actually bigger than the text size like the text size is actually using less space but the box size is actually big so if you want to make the text fit that content size what you can do is you can choose this option like cap height to baseline so it will fit the text box to the text height but in ui design we don't use this thing so i will not recommend you using that thing okay next we have is the line styles like if i take this 
and if i choose the first option then it will add a bullet point after every single text and now the paragraph spacing option here like this was the paragraph spacing initially now we have the list spacing like if i increase it you can see that it's increasing the spacing between two lists okay then we have the numbers list here also okay and next very important thing we have is the truncate text like if i select this and resize it wait a minute let's left align it first okay now if i resize it what if i don't want to take the text in the next line i want it to disappear as soon as i resize it so for that what i can do is if i can choose this option truncate that text okay like this option then it will truncate that text like we call this thing truncation like it will add three dots in the ending okay like if i just resize it then it will add three dots in the ending and it will hide the text but if you still double click on it the text is still there it just said it's not visible okay let me press escape okay and there are options like if you can increase the height here like, but if you want to keep the text visible only to two lines you can type two here like type two and hit enter oh, wait a minute okay then it will show the text only in two lines like if i resize it more then it will truncate the text after two lines you can see the text is still visible you can see that here we have a blue line it's the baseline of the text here and if you don't know about the baseline go watch the video about typography in ui design theory is very important i am telling this again and again because it's very important okay now let's see how can you generate your color sorry text styles because we don't pick random font size or font weight in ui design we generate our type system similar to the color styles okay simply close it and we will use a plugin called style list and text color generator simply click on this a link is in the description then we have two options here like typography and colors although you can use this plugin to generate your color palette but this is a little advanced if you have good practice you can go with this okay and there are multiple plugins you can use any plugin you want i'm just showing you the simplest one okay now here what you have to do is you have to select the base size keep the base size 16 i'm not going to the theory i have already explained the, all these things in theory part i'm just covering the tool okay then we have the scale option again leave this thing as it is rounding is round to two integers like, like it should be selected to round to integers and choose the font font like whatever font you are using like if you use roboto or montserrat like we are using montserrat in this design if you were to click on this plus icon you can see the font size here like the biggest font size we have is the 39 then we have 31 then we have 25 20 okay if you want more font size it simply click on it and in ui design you don't need bigger font size like 40 around 48 pixels is the biggest size you will, you will use in ui design majority of the cases yeah there are exceptions but in majority of the cases you will not go beyond 48 pixels like the text size around 48 pixels like 40 in this case we have the 49 pixels you will rarely use 61 pixels in ui design then you have to leave the text name empty it will generate the text name automatically again that's in the theory part how we naming colors then you have to select this option like this is the font weight you have to select three font weight like the medium regular and bold uh, okay like here we have the bold so, or, and if you don't have the regular weight you can go with the light one and if but if you have the regular weight and a medium weight and bold weight you can go with this three okay then we have the line height you can type the line height if you want i'm leaving this thing empty as for, okay now you have to select the font width for another font size okay and you have to do this thing for all the font size we have okay then after that simply click click on create style create 13 styles okay then it will generate the text styles here you can see that we have a montserrat simply expand it you can see that it has generated all the colors sorry text styles now what you have to do is you have to group them so that it's easy to manage so simply select the first one hold down shift and select the last one like this is the 61 pixel font size only the weight is different the font weight is different font size is same so we will group them according to their font size so right click and choose add to group and type the font size here like 61 one and hit enter okay then it will group all these things and you have to do this for all the text select the first one select the last one right click and choose to group and 49 and uh, about the naming like we don't uh, name these things like 61 49 we assign a letter to that like h1 h2 like heading 1 heading 2 heading 3 and if you want to know about the naming of the text style go watch the video about typography again theory is very important now coming the, to the another option we have is the effects and grids now coming when it comes to the grids uh, like there are two type of grid the pixel grid system and the column grid system 
if you have watched the video about grid system you already know that so what you can do is you can simply select any screen go to this layout grid option simply click on plus then you will have this option here now in ui design it's a good idea to use a four pixel grid system and if you don't know about pixel grid system if i tell you in short like we design everything in multiple of four okay like if i select this so the height is actually 55 pixels so we cannot use 55 pixels if we are using four pixel grid system we will use a height which is a multiple of four like if i select this and resize it okay like you can see that we have a grid here four pixel grid here because we added a grid to the frame like we have a four pixel grid here if you just click on this icon then you can see that we have a grid and we have other options here like if you click on grid then we have column grid we have raw grid but we will choose grid for now and here is a size like four pixel okay and this is the color you can leave these thing as it is like based upon your requirement like which grid system you are using but in majority of the cases if you are a beginner you should use a four pixel grid system that will work fine for all of your projects okay so leave it as it is like it will draw four pixel box like if i draw a rectangle you can see that the box is of four pixels like the grid is a four pixel grid okay and there is one more option you should turn on it's the nudge amount simply press ctrl p or ctrl forward slash or command forward slash and press nudge amount sorry type nudge amount and choose this option by default it's a 1 and 10 you have to change that thing to 1 or 4 or any pixel grid system you are using if you are using a 8 pixel grid system type 8 here it what it will do is it will snap your things like if i select it and hold down shift and then press the right arrow key it will jump 4 pixels okay by default it jumps 10 pixels so you have to change that thing okay and i explained all this thing in the first video of this figma design course now to add this grid to your local styles because you are going to use this grid in all the screens so you have to add this thing to your grid system simply click on four simply click on these dots four dots and simply click on plus and then type 4px grid and you can also type the description about this grid system okay but we are not doing that simply click on create style then it will add that thing to our local style let me collapse it you can see that we have a grid system here okay now if i select any screen and then go to this layout grid option then i can choose the grid system then it will add the grid to that thing oh, next grid we have is the column grid like if i press S f and then if i go inside this presets option go to desktop and choose the desktop frame okay and then let me add a grid simply click on the layout grid go to this option and choose the column grid we have other option also like raw grid but you will rarely use raw grids in ui design so i will not recommend you to create a a raw grid system because it's not possible to use the same raw grid in all the designs okay but you can use the same column grid in all the designs okay simply click on column and if you want to know about the column size like what should be the column grid size go, you know, go watch the video about website grid system i think it's the third video in the playlist if i'm not wrong in that i have told you how this grid system work and all that stuff but if i tell you in short we design all the things according to this grid like if i to were to create a frame like if i uh, for example if i show you youtube like this is a youtube like they are using a grids like they have 12 grids here it's not visible we don't include that thing in ui design we just use that thing as a reference point like they designed all this thing inside a grid okay so, so that they design look consistent like all the things are perfectly aligned you can see that here here also on the right side all things are perfectly aligned because they are using a grid system okay so coming back to figma you have to change the count to 12 for desktop and we create a three version for column grid one is for desktop one is for tablet one is for mobile okay then we can change the gutter spacing like gutter is the spacing between two grids like if i type 56 here then it's the spacing between two grids you can see that this is the spacing between two grids if i draw a rectangle you can see that it's 56 pixels okay let me select the frame again go to this column option okay i can change the color from here but you should leave the color as it is it will work fine okay then we have three options here like stretch center left if you just click on the left option it will align all the grids to the left side okay let me change the gutter width 16 and change the width to 88 pixels okay you can see that the, all the grids are aligned to the left and if i choose right it will align to the grids to the left and if i choose center it will align the grids to the center so even if i resize the frame the grids will remain in the center okay then if i choose third or fourth option stretch okay then if i select it and resize the frame then they will stretch according to the screen width okay let me undo it select this option 
okay now and we have other options here like this is the margin and if you type like if i type 48 here then it will add a 48 pixels margin like this is the left uh, sorry right margin and this is the left margin and the spacing between two grids is called gutter okay and if you notice closely like when you choose the stretch option the width option is disabled you can you cannot type the width obviously because if the screen size changes the width will automatically stretch but if you choose the center option now the margin option will be disabled because you cannot specify the margin because the grid will stay on their places the spacing of left right spacing will not matter okay okay so you have to do the same thing you have to click on this icon go to this plus like and type the desktop 12 column grid okay and then you have to generate the column grid for your tablet version simply press f go to this uh, tablet and choose and choose the iphone mini 8.3 and you have to add eight grids here simply click here go to columns uh, type eight you have to specify margin according to your requirements and if you don't know how to uh, specify these things go watch the video about column grid system you will understand this thing and you have to do the same thing and yeah there is no good plugin to generate the grid system you have to do these things manually okay and you have to generate three column grid system first one is the desktop second for tablet and third for mobile okay you can do that i'm not showing you anymore let's jump into the effects like if you click on local style we have other option effect now effect is actually the drop shadow let's say if i want to add a drop shadow to this button and obviously i will use that same drop shadow in all the buttons so for that i will add that drop shadow to my effect simply click on it and then we have this option here drop shadow if you just go inside this then you will be able to change the properties like here i can change the properties like here i can change the direction you can see that okay and here is the blur amount and here is a spread okay you can play around with this option this is not a complex uh, thing you can play around with this option this is not that much complex okay then we have other option like if you click on drop shadow we have inner shadow like you can see that a shadow is added inside the box like if i change the properties let's change the y direction next you can see that the shadow is coming from the inside of the button okay so how we use it but in ui design majority of the time we will use only drop shadow okay you can explore these options this is not that much hard this is a layer blur option like it will blur the whole layer then we have third option it's called background blur now when you choose background blur nothing will happen okay background blur only works if you place something behind the element like if i draw a rectangle okay and then press v and then click on the effects choose background blur and if i increase the blur amount you can see that still nothing is happening that's because the layer behind the element is not visible so for that what you have to do is you have to decrease the fill amount like if i type 50 here now if i change blur amount you can see that the background is getting blurred that's why it's named background blur it changes the blur of the background but if i decrease the layer layer opacity it will not work like if i decrease the layer opacity and increase the fill color it will not work because it has decreased the layer opacity you have to decrease the fill opacity or stroke opacity like if i also add stroke and increase the width and let's increase the opacity to normal let's type 50 percent in the stroke and move it somewhere around here and choose the outside option okay now if i change the background blur you can see the only the element below the stroke are getting affected they are only getting the blur amount the fill color is on 100 percent so it will not work so for the background color to, so for even the background blur to work the fill opacity or the stroke opacity should be less than 100 percent okay and there is an effect called glass morphism effect you can watch any video about glass morphism effect on youtube or read any blog you will understand that thing we use that thing in ui design like the whole windows operating system or the ios operating system they use glass morphism in their ui design okay so go watch some video about glass morphism you will understand that thing that's a very amazing effect okay and the option like the inner shadow option we use that thing in new morphism like new morphism is a design style you can search that thing like write down the term new morphism and glass morphism these are two terms you should explore uh, these are they are very amazing effect if you use them properly otherwise they might mess up your design okay okay now we have covered the color styles here now let me show you how can you generate code for a developer like if i show you uh, this is the color styles code like if you look at the structure the structure is same as it was in design like we have the primary here then we have 200 like the primary 200 then we have the value like this is the hex value 
you can see that thing here okay now if i scroll here then i have primary 300 here is the value and it's on the top it's showing that it's a color it might be a text here but it in this case we have the color color primary 300 and this is the value and you don't have to understand the code i'm just showing you you have to share this file with your developer and tell him to use this color okay so when you your developer is designing let me delete this so when he will he will select any element and if we have added styles to that thing let add a style so when he will see your design he he don't have to copy the hex code he will copy the style name for that let's go to developers option and if you're not able to access the dev mode like if you click on this option you need figma premium but i am assuming that you are a student if you are watching this video in that case you can apply for figma education plan they will give you figma premium for free simply go to figma.com education link is in the description sign up and they will give you figma premium for free then you have to move your design file into the teams like simply click on this icon and move to projects okay i will show you that thing in just a minute like how we create team and projects okay okay now if i click on dev mode it will enable the developers mode so when developer will select any element and if we have added style to it it will show the properties like this so developer don't have to copy the color code like this is a color code i can change the color code from here like hex code or rgb or hex okay developer will not copy this color code if he will copy this color style okay like this is a variable name so whenever i will create a button like imagine this is a button code although this is not the correct code this is not how we write code like if i were to specify the background color I will type the variable name like this is the style name like the style we created primary 600 so it will pick the color from this file it will go and search where is primary 600 oh the value of primary 600 is this so it will apply this color to this button so in future if i were to change the primary color i don't have to come here and change the primary 600 i can simply change the color value here and it will update that thing in the whole app or website okay and that will work fine okay now let me show you how can you generate this uh, color code with the help of plugin simply go to resources option and, and we will use a plugin called design tokens desig and token is a very big topic in itself i will create a separate video for that it's in the variables video like the fifth episode of this series if i will cover tokens in the detail but for now just run this plugin and click on export design token files then you will see us interface something like this you have to choose this option like what uh, properties you want to export i want to export colors gradient and all that stuff okay and uh, the, you can see that there are many options like figma variables motion radii but for this video you only have to you only have to choose the font style gradients typography bo border you have to remove border on opacity also just select these options we will cover all these options in the future videos okay and then simply click on export then it will give you a json file like the file format of that this will be json file you have to give this file to your developer and he will be able to access the whole color library you created in this file and in future if you change your color palette and whenever you're changing color palette never change the color if it will mess up the code okay so in future if you change your color palette run this plugin again create another json file and it will copy update all the values and it will work fine okay now let's jump into the second part of this video which is libraries in figma okay if you go to home okay and if you see this we have an option here of the teams here like if you just expand this option if it's collapsed we have options here like it will show you your current teams and there is an option to create new team and if you have not created a team simply click on create new team type the team name here let's say uh, team one okay and simply click on create team it will show you option to add team members we will skip that thing for now and like finish setup then it will show you options to buy the figma premium but you have to apply for figma education plan and that way it will give you all things for free simply go to figma.com education then fill out some simple form and it will give you figma premium for free okay then for now i will choose the starter plan okay then it will create a new team and inside team we have projects okay so once you have created your team after applying for figma education plan okay then you will see that we have different teams inside sorry different projects inside that okay let's say you and your friend is working on a new project let's say a e-commerce website so what you have to do is you have to create a new project okay then type the project name like e-commerce okay you, you can name the team anything you want okay then simply click on pro create project and here we have option like everyone at design x can edit you can change this thing to view if you are adding someone in your team project 
okay but i will recommend you to keep that thing to everyone at design x can view because you might add developers to your team also so it's not a good idea to give everyone a edit access okay then it will create a new team if i go back then i can see my other teams like previously created teams and my new team here if i just simply double click on the name then it will open a team here okay i can create a new file and that file will be inside this team or i can go to recent file or my drafts file and i can move files inside this you can simply select and drag it here and if you if you are not able to see this option here simply go to teams and you have to favorite that thing like simply click on the star and it will add that team to your favorite list and and you will be able to access that team easily simply go to recent move this file like simply drag and move this file to the effects oh sorry the team you created okay or you can right click and choose this option like move file and move this file to the project you created like simply select e-commerce and then move okay then it will move that file to the e-commerce project you created now if you open the file now you can access dev mode in this you can see that we can access dev mode because if the file is in your draft you will not be able to access dev mode okay and you can also move your file to project from here if you just click on the arrow and then choose move to project okay then you will see all your teams and project here so you can move this file to that project or team okay so now the main purpose of creating any team or moving your project to the team is that you can use all these color styles in. so in real projects what we do is we separate everything like we create our color styles in one file with our typography styles in one file for better management like if you are working with a very big team so we have dedicated teams like one team will look only to the icons like we have the graphic designers who create icons in big companies okay but if you are an individual you are the only one who managing so it's a good idea to separate everything in different files that way it will be very easy to manage so the thing is what if i want to use this color palette in my ui design like, like i created all this color palette in a color palette file and i want to use this all this color palette in my ui design file so what i have to do is like if i create a new file okay like new design file but if i want to use these uh, color styles or text styles or effects in this file like the new file i created let's rename it to ui design okay uh, let's okay and let's rename it to like our color uh, style okay and let me delete the designs here so that it's easy okay so now to use the colors from this file to this file you have to move this file to the team project we have already done that thing make sure that you, you are inside a team project you can see the team project name here like this is inside a e-commerce project okay so after that what you have to do is you have to click on this option and choose this option publish library okay then you have to select all the elements like this is a color style like i want to publish all these color styles so that i can use this color style in any file okay like simply select all this thing and choose publish then it will take some time and it will publish all your color styles and all other properties if you have added any and all other components and i will cover components in the next to next video like the fourth video is about component we use this same feature in components also okay because again we separate all things like you will create all your components like button input field in separate file and you will use those components in your main ui design file so we use the same thing in the components also okay so i will go to inside this ui design option and then in the layer panel like we have this search option layers and assets i will go to assets and use this option here this is a library option simply click on it or you can press ctrl alt o or command option o then you have to search for your library here like what was the name of our file it was color style so you can search for color style okay then simply click on add to file now our color style has been added to our file so you can although you cannot see anything here but if you draw any rectangle or any shape and if you click on this icon you can see that i have all of my color style available here if i choose this red color i'm using the same color as it, it was in this color so if i change anything here like let's say i change this red color uh, to green let's say okay and if i close it now i have to publish the changes because it will not get updated automatically you have to publish the change and then accept the changes okay simply go here and uh, click on publish library or you can press ctrl alt o or command option o and then simply click on publish then you will see that what things has been changed like you can see that the color has been modified okay and you can see that we have options here like these things are unchanged and you can obviously check and check this thing like if you want to send a particular update only okay then simply click on publish 
okay then it will take some time and it will publish your design then go to the design file press ctrl alt o then go to updates then you can see that we have two options here current page all pages i will recommend you to go to all pages then update that because you will be having multiple pages like in one page you might design the login sign up flow then home and dashboard so it will update uh, all the properties in all the pages okay then simply click on update all then it will take some time and you can see that the color is updated now okay now let me show you how can you use components or like in this example i will show you icon set like if you go to figma community go to home go to this option explore community and search for material design icon uh, you will find this file here and i will leave the link to this file in the description simply go to files and template and you see this option here simply click on it okay now we have different icon sets here if you just expand the pages okay simply go to filled option then you can see that we have different icons here Okay, now i will deselect everything and go to this option obviously i will move this thing to my project first go to move to projects let's rename it material icons uh, okay okay now it's good simply click on it and move to projects i will move that thing to the project i want to move it like e-commerce okay then move it okay then it will uh, take some time and move it your project then you have to publish the changes like publish library then you have to publish that thing okay it will take some time because it's a very big file so it will take some time but i have already published this file so i will show you how can you use this thing like if, if you go to inside ui design again open your library by pressing ctrl alt o then choose the material design icons like material design icons i have already added that thing you have to simply select search it and add it then go to the assets panel or you can press shift i to go to the resources panel and here is the library which you are using like if you click on recent then you can choose the library or the file you want to pick like material icons i published this file before and if i search for any icon search then i can drag the icon here you can see that it's a component okay. this icon is imported from this material design icons file and yeah one more thing it will not publish any random thing like if i draw a frame it will not publish this thing like even if i add something here like if i created a plus button let's say this is your icon this will not publish this thing you have to create a component first and if you don't know about component don't worry fourth video is about component you will understand that thing but if i tell you in short uh, let's go to the let's say this is a button and i'm using this button again and again and again so obviously i want this button to look the same so what i will do is i will select this and, and choose this option like create component or you can press ctrl alt k or command option k then you can see that in the layers panel the icon has been changed it's not a frame anymore it's a component you can see that thing in the there is a purple icon so now now if i copy it okay and then if i change anything in this like in this is the master component and this is a child component you can identify that thing in the layers panel and this is the icon of the master component or the parent component and the, this is the child component so if i select the parent component okay and then if i change anything let's change the color to black then it will update that thing in all the child elements no matter how many copies i create of this thing like if i create so many copies it will update that thing in all the child element like if i select any other color like yellow it will update that thing in all the child element we call instances like we call the child element instances okay and let's say imagine if you want to detach anything i don't want this button to behave like its parent so what you can do is you can simply right click and choose detach instant we will cover all these all these things in detail okay don't get panicked if you don't understand anything fourth video is about components now if i change anything it will not update that thing in this element because we detach that thing okay now next thing is what if i want to publish this thing to the figma community let's say like this so that other people can copy and use that thing and when i publish to figma community the file is separate like they copy that file they are, they are not using your designs directly like in this case the, you are using all the components and styles directly from that file okay but in the figma community things are different you copy a file you can see that when i click on anything like say if open in figma it will create a copy so how can you publish this thing to your figma community for any usage like, like if you want to post anything for publicly so what you can do is you have to go to share option first of all you have to add this file to the project obviously then go to this publish to community option then you will see option for publish here but it's showing that you cannot republish a duplicated file because i copied this file from figma community so what i will do is i will go to this file this is our original file simply click on share and go to publish to community then simply click on publish then you have to add a thumbnail you can see the property of thumbnails here you can create a thumbnail okay 
uh, simply click on the plus button and add the thumbnail the name the name it select the category okay and description you can add description if you want okay then we have some advanced property you can play around with these things it's not that much hard then simply click on publish then it will publish your design file okay then if you go to home then click on this option and choose this community profile then it will show you all the files you have published till date like this is a file this is a file this is a plugin you can see that and this is a text to json file converter plugin then we have another file okay and if you just double click on any file and here we have an option called manage resources although this page might look a little different if you are watching from future and figma has updated the ui but the logic will remain the same so if here we have an option called manage resources so if you want to update this file like you can go to this open original file and if you change anything in this file here then you have to go to the share option again update community file then you have to publish the updates like you did the same thing with the styles and all the stuff here okay so this is how you publish a file to the figma community it's not that much hard it's very easy and that's it this was for this video now you know how to generate your color styles your typography styles your effects and your grids and how to use your design file properly in a more organized way and how to publish your design file publicly okay so see you in third episode till then bye and make sure that you are learning theory part theory is very important you are useless without theory okay so see you in next video bye